The surprise shakeup at Research in Motion did very little to convince investors that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. The BlackBerry maker, once the most valuable company in Canada, has fallen from grace. Can the crown jewel of Canada's tech industry turn it around? Our big picture panel weighs in. Bill Robson is the president and CEO of the C.D. Howe Institute. Aaron Weir is an economist with the United Steelworkers of Canada. And Craig Alexander is senior vice president and chief economist at TD Bank Financial Group. So, RIM really took it on the chin this week. I mean, I mean what strikes me is that uh, as RIM share price falls, this just increases the specter of a uh, foreign takeover. I mean, we also had earnings from Apple, and one of the eye popping numbers in that report uh, was that that company is sitting on about $98 billion of cash. I mean, RIM's whole market cap is under $10 billion, so you can easily imagine uh, an outside company like Apple being able to take out one of its main competitors for only a small fraction of its cash reserves. Interesting thesis, but let me ask you a question, be pragmatic about it. If I'm Apple, Tim Cook, what does RIM have that I can't do myself? Well, I mean, first of all, it has a whole bunch of patents, and second of all, it does still have a big share of the market uh, in a lot of the developing world. Uh, obviously, I don't know what's going to happen in terms of a takeover, but I think it's a possibility that Canadian policymakers need to start thinking about, because we've had some pretty negative experiences with foreign takeovers uh, recently. I mean, uh, we had Rio Tinto take over Alcan, and then at the start of this uh, new year, uh, they locked out the workers in Alma, Quebec, uh, basically demanding uh, that they accept that as people retire, they'll be replaced by subcontractors uh, paid only half the prevailing wage. So, and you have a problem with that? Oh, I absolutely do. I mean, you, it'd be very hard to argue that that foreign takeover is producing any kind of a net benefit for Canadian workers. What about the shareholders? Well, who, which shareholders? The only ones the, that the matter. The ones that of up... Caterpillar that mostly don't live uh, in uh, Canada or the shareholders of Rio Tinto that also mostly live outside the country? I don't care where they live. They put their money in harm's way. They took a risk. You must be a union guy. Well, I, I certainly am, and I think the priority for the Canadian government needs to be uh, taking care of the interests of Canadians, including the people that work at these facilities. Aaron's with the steelworkers, Ken. Yes, I just figured that out. That's very good. <laughs> would, you you object, would you object to a foreign, I don't care what company is Apple, it could be an Australian company or somebody from Cambodia, a $20 bid on RIM stock right now would be a welcome a sigh of relief to all these shareholders that have been slaughtered. I was in Waterloo yesterday. Grown men are weeping there. And at the end of the day, if somebody is a foreign entity that was 100% control, would you object to that? Because RIM, RIM could go to zero. I wouldn't object to it out of hand. What I think the value of the Investment Canada Act is, is the government gets to take a look at these proposed takeovers and determine whether or not they'll produce a net benefit for Canadians. So I don't think we should automatically say no. What I do think we should do is use this foreign investment review process to negotiate the best possible deal for Canadians. So if some company wants to come in and just take RIM's patents and close down all its operations in Canada, then yeah, the Canadian government might have some doubts about that. On the other hand, if some foreign buyer wants to come in and actually invest more capital in the company and actually employ more people in Canada, then yes, we should welcome that to foreign investment. Okay, we have to press pause here because we have to take a very short break.